It was a whirlwind visit that even the rain couldn't spoil. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall have made a flying stopover in Tasmania as part of their Australian tour. There was beer, sheep and an enthusiastic public which turned out in force for a chance to meet the royal couple. Jackson Vernon begins our coverage. In the English-inspired Tasmanian township of Richmond, the royal couple was reminded of where they were. We are Australia. Hundreds lined the streets, including one couple who travelled from Melbourne. I couldn't go to the Cup, um, so I thought this would be the place to come to. They were well behind schedule in the tightly packed five and a half hour visit, leading to a royal apology. <laughs> Light rain didn't speed up a drawn out meeting with locals. He just said welcome and uh, he said uh, the farmers will be very happy with the rain, but of course it hasn't lasted very long. <laughs> she had lovely soft hands. Yes, she was lovely. It was absolutely wonderful to get to talk to Prince Charles. I had a photo of my brother holding or shaking hands with Prince Charles and I asked him, I did breach the, the law, but I asked could I have a photo holding his hand too and he said yes. We got some good teachers. Even hard to impress youngsters were overwhelmed. It was, it was so amazing. I, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. It was very cool and awesome. I gave him a few stuff from my mum. There was time to sample a beer in the local pub. He didn't drink at all, but yeah, had a few mouthfuls and yeah, really enjoyed the beer. They later separated, Camilla taking in a garden lunch with rural ladies groups. I think that the, her knowledge of, of agriculture was, was certainly a surprise. We were meant to go for a walk, but with the weather and the time frame, it wasn't possible. In an Australian superfine merino wool suit, Charles was suitably dressed for his visit to a sheep stud in Sorel. He got up close and personal during the mustering, but it was a bit too much for the dogs. They went quite well until they had to get past all the, the cameras and things and the sheep decided to not quite do the right thing. There was a shearing display, then the prince tried his hand at throwing a fleece. For the first time it was pretty good. It was only a short visit, about 50 minutes, but as patron of a worldwide wool campaign, it gave Prince Charles a chance to promote one of his greatest interests. It's not only relying on the Chinese to buy you know, the bulk of the wool at the moment, so if he can really get them to stand up and take notice, well, you know, it's all a bonus and help to us. High hopes for His Royal Highness. Jackson Vernon, ABC News, Sorel. From the country to the city, at Hobart Salamanca Place, hundreds braved wet weather. As you can see, it is raining and I am cold. With umbrella in tow, Prince Charles took his time shaking hands and chatting with excited onlookers. There were posies aplenty and a curtsy or two. Definite royalists, yes. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> There were those who favoured the Duchess of Cornwall, following her footsteps while Prince Charles browsed Salamanca's arts and craft boutiques. Despite police fears, there was only one protester. I was actually asked to move back because, and I respect that, because you know I didn't want to get right in his face and hit him with it or anything like that. Artisans and local producers continued to push their wares, while dignitaries came together for a quick-fire state reception, with the Premier keen to take centre stage. As we share the same birthday, I also wish His Royal Highness a very happy birthday for the 14th of November next week. The Prince was charmed. But I can't tell you how much my wife and I have enjoyed coming. Uh, to Tasmania today. It has been a great joy and we can't thank you enough for the most wonderfully warm welcome that you've given us today. The royal visit cost taxpayers $100,000 but Lara Giddings insists it's money well spent. This is publicity that will go worldwide and in fact right into the heartland of the market of the United Kingdom as well. After five and a half hours on the ground, the couple was off again, this time to Sydney. Anna Yard, ABC News.